After Fitch downgraded the United States, Moody's just downgraded 10 different banks and then they put six large lenders on notice of potentially being downgraded. And the reason why Moody said this is because of three reasons. Number one, profitability challenges for banks. Number two, funding risks for banks. And number three, future banking trouble ahead. Here's what Moody's had to say, quote, Many banks' second quarter results showed growing profitability pressures that will reduce their ability to generate internal capital. Now, this comes at an interesting time because Goldman Sachs just came out and they put out a statement saying that they're predicting that we're going to see $1.8 trillion worth of corporate debt maturing in the next 24 months. That means that we've had corporations load up on the biggest debt pile ever in 2020, 2021, and into 2022 because interest rates were at their lowest rates ever. And now these interest rates on this debt, which is not a 30 year fixed rate mortgage, is gonna start coming due in the next two years. We're gonna see almost $2 trillion worth of corporate debt readjust at a higher interest rate, which means higher expenses for corporations. And this also comes at a time where about $1 trillion worth of real estate commercial debt is coming due again in the next 24 months. And we already know the shakeup happening in the commercial real estate market with more and more people working from home or working hybrid, although we are seeing more companies telling their employees to go back into the office, like even Zoom came out earlier, Zoom, saying that you have to get back into the office, even though they were the ones pushing people to work from home. But this is the shakeup that we're seeing. So let's discuss now what this Moody's downgrade means and what's going on with that before we do. I am in Manhattan right now, and the reason why is because, well, I'm hosting my live investor summit on august 15th at 8 o'clock p.m eastern time if you have not joined or registered for the investor summit yet make sure you do so it's completely free i'm going to be going over how our economy has changed how money has changed and how you can capitalize on investment opportunities in this changing economy and the reason why i'm doing it on august 15th is because it's the 52nd anniversary of our dollar being taken off of the gold standard so if you'd like to join me on this investor summit it's completely free and i'll put the link to how you can join me virtually for free down in the description below now jumping into moody's there's three things that moody's is highlighting as concerns for banks right now number one is higher funding costs number two is profitability pressures and number three is slowing loan growth when they talk about higher funding costs that means that the higher interest rates out there are making it more difficult for banks to be profitable because they have to pay more money to borrow this money right the federal reserve bank has raised interest rates but on the second factor, they talk about profitability pressures. And the reason why now these higher interest rates are making it less profitable for banks, even though banks can charge higher interest rates, is because people are taking out less loans. People are looking at interest rates right now and they're saying, you know what, maybe I shouldn't go out and get a car note. Maybe I shouldn't go out and get a mortgage. So people are taking out less debt. They're borrowing less money, especially compared to how much money they were borrowing in 2020 and 2021, and even into the early part of 2022, because back then interest rates were at their lowest levels in the history of time between the 2022 early part and now we have seen interest rates go from the lowest levels ever to the highest levels in the last 20 plus years so there's going to be an impact of that and the third thing that they talk about is slowing loan growth the banks are not seeing growing loans partially because of regulations partially because of higher interest rates and maybe partially because of the economy as well Here's what Moody's had to say. They said that U.S. banks' second quarter earning, or earnings showed material increases in funding costs as well as profitability pressures related to the significant and rapid tightening in monetary policy and inverted yield curves, which is hurting the profitability, implying a weaker ability to generate capital internally, aka these higher interest rates and people's less interest to go out and get a loan is hurting a bank's ability to make money, which is why Moody's has been downgrading these banks but even more specifically the reason why Moody's was highlighting these profitability issues is because what we've been seeing happen is with these higher interest rates people who have cash can finally get some return on their money and maybe that return is potentially in a CD maybe that return is in a high interest savings account maybe that return is in a treasury yield treasury bond treasury note and what they highlighted is that well, people are pulling their money out of non-interest bearing deposit accounts. So a lot of the traditional banks have your regular savings accounts that are paying still 0.05%. And let's assume that you have $100,000 in cash. If you have $100,000 in cash sitting in this account, 
paying 0.5%, 0.05%, you're going to say, well, why don't I just take this 100000 and move it into a high interest savings account and get 5% interest on my savings? Because now I can earn five grand in interest by doing nothing except leaving this cash sitting in my high interest savings account. So a lot of money has been pulled out of these low interest accounts. And the reason why that's hurting banks is because when you go and deposit $100 in the bank, the bank doesn't keep the $100 there. They take the $100 and then they're gonna lend it out to somebody else. In fact, with fractional reserve lending, they might lend out more than that, but banks take the money that you deposit and they're gonna lend that money out. They don't wanna keep that money there because while the savings is an asset for you, it's a liability for the bank because they have to pay interest out to you. And the way that they fund your interest, even if it's a small amount of interest, is by lending this money out. So in an ideal situation, you would deposit the $100,000 in a bank paying 0.05%. The bank is gonna lend this money out and generate five, six, seven, maybe 20% interest, depending on if it's a mortgage or a credit card or a car note or whatever. And then they're gonna pay you next to nothing. But people are saying, wait, why would I wanna keep my money into this low interest account when I can move it into a higher interest rate account, which is hurting the profitability of some banks. The second thing that Moody's talked about is net interest margins have come down and lending has come under pressure because of the higher interest rates. So the lending pressure is essentially people saying, I don't know if I wanna get a mortgage anymore. We've seen the demand for mortgages come down. Now the demand is still there and the housing market is still weird because there's such a low supply of homes. I just made a video on this. You can check my video on the housing market uh, to learn more about that. But because people are not borrowing money the same way as they were before, banks are seeing that less and less people are taking out loans and banks make money when people borrow money. So if less and less people are taking on loans, that means banks have less income coming in. And so this is where now Moody said these are concerns, especially when you tie in the economic concerns of what's going on in the economy and this coming debt, because Moody said that they are predicting a recession coming. And it's interesting that they said this because the Federal Reserve Bank last week said that they are predicting no more recession. There's no recession in sight. Well, Moody's came and said the opposite. Moody's in the report this week said that they are predicting a recession coming in 2024. Here's what they said. This comes as a mild US recession is on the horizon for early 2024 and asset quality looks set to decline from solid but unsustainable levels. AKA Moody's says that they're expecting some sort of mild recession starting in 2024. And the reason why, or part of the reason why they're expecting more pain is because asset prices, things like stock prices, real estate prices have gone up so much. And they're saying that it has reached an unsustainable level. And because of that, it looks like asset prices are gonna come down. Now, why is this so important? Because you have these economic issues, you have the banking issues, and then you have the debt issue, which is what I highlighted in the beginning of this video, which is that Cor Goldman Sachs says that there's about $1.8 trillion worth of corporate debt that's going to readjust in the coming 24 months. And there's about $1 trillion worth of commercial real estate debt that's going to readjust in the coming 24 months. When debt readjusts, that's okay. And if it readjusts at a higher interest rate, that's also generally okay. But generally what that means now is that when a business is higher expenses, they're gonna to need to generate more money. And if our economy is slowing down in 2024 and 2025 because of the higher interest rates, that would mean that businesses, corporations are making less money. Now think about that for a second. If a corporation is making less money because the economy is slowing down because of higher interest rates, because of whatever, that would mean that they would have a tougher time paying higher expenses. But if your debt costs are rising at a time where your revenue is also falling, that's gonna put more and more businesses in a bind. And that's uh, what some analysts are worried about. Let me read you this other quote. Those higher interest rates are likely to eat up a greater portion of company revenue, which could end up weighing on the economy. For every dollar spent to service their debt, firms will likely pull back on capital expenditures by 10 cents and labor spending by 20 cents, meaning that for every additional dollar now that corporations have to pay to service their debt because interest rates are going up. Remember, corporate debt is not a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. 
it readjusts. And so when this debt readjusts, they're gonna have more money they have to pay in interest. And when they do, that means they're gonna spend less money on capital expenditures and less money on labor costs. A capital expenditure is like buying a new piece of machinery or buying a new building, something big, a big spending purchase. And labor costs are employees. So if they now have to spend more and more money on servicing their debt, not only will they spend less money into the economy, but that also means they might have to cut back on their employees. They might have to cut back on their labor costs, which means higher unemployment. And this is where Modi is saying, when you start looking at the banking issues, the profitability issues, with the less interest of people to borrow money, that's becoming concerning. So they're looking at the banks that are looking like they could potentially have more risks. And that's why they came out and downgraded them. And now they're also looking at some larger banks and potentially downgrading them as well. So this is where it's important to understand what's going on. That way you can be financially educated. That way you can work on being financially prepared because like I've said before, 2023 is not the year for you to go out and finance a new truck. This is the year for you to get financially smart. That way you can be ready for whatever is coming in the economy, but that requires you to get prepared, have cash to protect you, have cash to capitalize on investments and build your financial education. That way you can actually see the opportunities. That's what we're talking about in the Investor Summit but you want to make sure you can actually see the opportunities because, well, you can have all the money in the world, but if you don't know where to invest, it doesn't do you any good. Likewise, you can find the best investment in the world, but if you don't have the money to capitalize on it, that's not gonna do you any good either. That's why this is the time to build that financial education, pay attention to what's happening, and see how you can build that preparedness and build that financial education.